A holistic approach to traffic safety requires improvements in all areas, from vehicle safety features to intersection design. Speed is one important safety consideration. There were nearly 10,000 speeding-related fatalities in 2017, about 26% of all fatalities on our roadways. How does speed contribute to unsafe conditions? And what can be done to reduce speed-related injuries and fatalities? In this video, we'll consider the research on speed and traffic safety and provide an overview of the topic. Let's start at the beginning. What is the definition of speeding? Speeding is when a driver does one of two things, exceeds the speed limit or drives too fast for conditions. Exceeding the speed limit is pretty self-explanatory, but what does it mean to drive too fast for conditions? Road conditions change, particularly with the weather. Rain and snow can make it hazardous to drive at the posted speed limit. Some roads use variable speed limits, speed limits that can change based on road conditions to help drivers choose a safe speed. Why is speeding dangerous? Speeding increases the risk of a crash in a few ways. First, it takes longer for speeding drivers to detect an emergency, increasing their stopping distance. Second, speeding cars take longer to come to a stop. Finally, as speed increases linearly, crash energy increases exponentially. For example, when the impact speed increases from 40 to 60 miles per hour, a 50% increase, the energy increases by 125%. This increase in force makes collisions more severe. At very high speeds, car safety equipment like airbags and seatbelts are insufficient to protect passengers. The variance in vehicle speeds can also be dangerous. Roads where drivers move at very different speeds can be less safe than those where everyone is driving at about the same pace. This effect is secondary to the reasons I just listed, however. The physics of a heavy vehicle moving fast and transferring that energy into another vehicle during a crash is what makes speeding potentially catastrophic. Speed is particularly dangerous in urban areas because cars are mixed with people on foot, bikes, and scooters, each with different levels of kinetic energy. There are many places, called conflict points, where a car can strike someone. It doesn't take much speed to make a crash fatal. The fatality rate for pedestrians hit by a car at 20 miles per hour is 5%, but that jumps to 45% at 30 miles per hour and 85% at 45 miles per hour. It's clear that excessive speeds can be dangerous. Speed limits are one effective means of reducing vehicle speeds and improving roadway safety. One famous natural experiment occurred during the oil crisis of the 1970s. The federal government established a national maximum speed law of 55 miles per hour as a means of reducing fuel consumption. This also had the effect of making rural highways safer. In the first year, one study estimated that there are 3,000 to 5,000 fewer fatalities than expected. The federal government repealed the law in 1995, once again allowing states to set their own speed limits. As of 2016, 25 states have maximum speed limits of at least 70 miles per hour. Texas had an 85 mile per hour speed limit on one stretch of highway, the highest in the nation. One study calculated that nearly 37,000 lives could have been saved if the national speed limit had not been repealed. The national law is one example of how speed limits are set, but most of the time local and state transportation engineers set the speed limits on all types of roads. How do they do it? Transportation engineers sometimes use a rule of thumb called the 85th percentile speed. Engineers measure vehicle speeds along a section of road they wish to set a speed limit. They find the speed at which 85% of drivers are driving slower, and then assign that as the speed limit. Rarely do engineers only use this rule of thumb, but instead consider other factors, such as lane widths, presence of medians, presence of cyclists, amount of driveways, and surrounding land uses. This can lead to context-appropriate speed limits, but also inconsistencies between roads as different engineers may interpret these characteristics differently. Infrastructure and vehicles play a critical role in encouraging safe speeds, but at the end of the day, it's the road users who decide how fast they are comfortable driving. In one survey, 91% of drivers agree that everyone should obey the speed limit, but 27% said they speed without thinking about it, and 42% agree that driving at or near the speed limit made it difficult to keep up with traffic. The allure of speeding is strong as people hope to shave minutes off of their trips, but traveling at 70 miles per hour instead of 65 over a 10-mile commute would save less than a minute. This assumes that a driver can travel at 70 miles per hour the entire trip, but with congestion and traffic controls, this is unlikely. Speeding is common on today's roadways, and speed limits are one way to address this risky behavior. The driving question here is, how do we set speed limits in a way that would provide the best level of mobility considering a safety constraint of zero traffic fatalities?